Our objectives in this lesson are the following. Illustrate the measures of central tendency. We have the mean, median, and the mode. And calculate the measures of central tendency. We have for ungrouped and grouped data. In this video lesson, we will discuss measures of central tendency for ungrouped data. I will create another video lesson on measures of central tendency for group data. Let's have a quick review of our previous lesson, the summation. We have here the given x sub 1 to x sub 5. Let us evaluate this. Summation of x, no lower and upper limit, meaning we are going to get the sum from x sub 1 up to x sub 5. So we have x sub 1 plus x sub 2 plus x sub 3 plus x sub 4 plus x sub 5. And then let us add 3 plus 5 is 8 plus 8 is 16 plus 10 is 26 plus 12 is 38. Summation of x is equal to 38. Today, we will be talking about statistical measures of data. Statistical measures of data are useful in making inferences about the population. We have three statistical measures, measures of central tendency, measures of location or position, and measures of variability. Again, in this video, we will talk about measures of central tendency. Measures of central tendency are descriptive measures which indicate the center or middle of the distribution. We have the mean, median, and the mode. Let's have the first one, the mean. This is the arithmetic average of a set of observation. When we say arithmetic average, it is the sum of the items divided by the number of items. Here are the notations for mean. We have the x bar, this one for the sample mean, and the mu, this one for population mean. Let's have the mean for ungrouped data. This is used for few cases where n is less than 30. So if it is a sample mean, then our formula is summation of x over a small letter n. If it is a population mean, then we have mu is equal to the summation of x over capital N. Where x bar or mu is the mean, summation of x is the sum of all scores, a small letter n and capital N is the number of observations. Let's have the first example. 10 out of 30 students have the following scores. 5, 8, 10, 9, 3, 7, 8, 5, 6, 4 in a 10 item quiz. Determine the average performance of these 10 students. It says here 10 out of 30 students. So meaning these scores is just part of the sample. So the formula that we are going to use is x bar equals summation of x over n. First thing that we have to do is to add all these scores here. And then we're going to divide it by the total number of observations. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Because we have 10 students. So divided by 10. 5 plus 8 is equal to 13. 13 plus 10 is 23. 23 plus 9 is 32. 32 plus 3 is 35. 35 plus 7 is 42. 42 plus 8 is 50. 50 plus 5 is 55. 55 plus 6 is 61. 61 plus 4 is 65. 65 divided by 10 will give us 6.5. So x bar is equal to 6.5. Another one, the number of guards at Mall of Rizal on each floor are first floor 12, second floor 10, third floor 8, fourth floor 6. Determine the mean number of guards for each floor. So we are talking about the total number of guards at Mall of Rizal, meaning what we have here is a population. So the formula that we are going to use is mu is equal to summation of x over capital N. So let's add the number of guards on each floor. We have 12 plus 10 plus 8 
plus 6. And then divided by the total number of observations. We have 1, 2, 3, 4. Because we have 1, 2, 3, 4 floors. So divided by 4. 12 plus 10 is 22. 22 plus 8 is 30. 30 plus 6 is 36. 36 divided by 4 is equal to 9. So mu is equal to 9. The next measure of central tendency is the median. This is the middle value when the set of observations is arranged in an increasing or decreasing order. Here are the notations that we are going to use. We have X tilde, this one for sample median. For population median, sometimes we use capital letter M or this symbol. We have two steps in determining the median. First one, you have to arrange the data in ascending or descending order. And second one, you have to find the middle number. We have different cases of median for ungrouped data. I will discuss this one by one with an example. Case 1, when the number of observation is odd, look for the middle value. Example, Michelle listed all the ages of her cousins, 2, 15, 9, 4, and 11. Determine the median. First thing that we have to do is we have to arrange this either in ascending or descending order. Let me arrange this in ascending order. So I'll have 2 first, and then 4, and then 9, and then 11, and then 15. And then second step, you have to find the number at the middle, and that would be this one. We have two values on the left and two values on the right. So this is the middle number, meaning this is our median. Now let's take a look. It says here, Michelle listed all the ages of her cousin. So we are talking of the population. So the symbol that we are going to use is this one. Mu tilde is equal to 9. Or we can also use capital M. Case 2. When the number of observation is even, solve for the arithmetic mean of the two middle values. Example, 10 randomly selected grade 11 students have the following grades in mathematics. 85, 75, 80, 93, 88, 79, 83, 95, 82, and 90. Again, first step is to arrange this either in ascending or descending order. This time, I'm going to arrange this in descending order. So the first value would be 95, and then I have 93, and then 90, and then I have 88, followed by 85, and then I have 83. Next is 82, then I have 80, then 79. And 75. Now, we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. And 10 is an even number. So, we have to look for the two middle values. And that would be 85 and 83. We have 1, 2, 3, 4. Four values on the left. 1, 2, 3, 4. Four values on the right. So, these are our two middle values. Now, let us get the arithmetic mean of this. To do that, you simply have to add these two and then divide it by 2 because there are two observations. 85 plus 83 divided by 2 will give us 84. This is our Median. The two commonly cases used for determining the median of ungrouped data is the case 1 and case 2. But let me share with you case 3. I learned this from my professor back in my graduate school. So case 3, when the middlemost value occurs twice, thrice, or more number of times, get the middlemost value or values, if even number, its or their identical value or values, and its or their counterparts. Then compute for their average. So example, scores of randomly selected students in a 20-item quiz. Let's have example 1. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 
five randomly selected students and here are their scores so first thing let us arrange this i'll arrange this in ascending order so i'll have 13 and then 15 another 15 and then 17 and then 20. i'll teach you another way on how to determine the number you are going to choose all you have to do is to divide the total number of observations by two if it is an add number of observation so we have one two three four five five divided by two is 2.5 and then round up to the next whole number that would be three so the third number one two three so we are going to choose this one but notice that this is also 15 and it says here when the middlemost value occurs twice tries or more number of times get the middlemost value so this one its identical value so this one and its counterpart the counterpart of this is 17 and then compute for their average so we're going to consider these three values we're going to add them and then divide it by three one two three 15 plus 15 is 30. 30 plus 17 is 47. 47 divided by 3 is 15.67. So this is our median. Let's have another example. This time we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Even number of observations. So let us arrange this. We have 10 and then 13. Another 13. We have 14, 17, and 20. So the middlemost value are 13 and 14. 1, 2, 2 values on the left. 1, 2, 2 values on the right. But notice again that this is identical to one of the middlemost value. So we're also going to consider this and its counterpart. So this time we are going to add four numbers and then divide it by four as well. 13 plus 13 plus 14 plus 17 divided by four. And this will give us 14.25. Again, case 3 is not commonly used. So make sure to check with your teacher if you are going to use this case or just case 1 and 2 that we previously discussed. The last measure of central tendency is the mode. This is the value with the highest frequency in the set of data. This is the value that appears the most. So take a look at this. M O for MO of mode. The notations that we are going to use, we have here for sample mode. This is small letter X with a hat on top of it. For the population mode, we have here M sub O or mu and a hat on top of it. We have four types of modes. We have unimodal distribution with only one mode, bimodal distribution with two modes, trimodal distribution with three modes, and multimodal distribution with more than three modes. Let's have an example. Determine and classify the mode or modes of the following. It would be best if you are going to arrange this in ascending or descending order. In that manner, same numbers are written close to one another. So let us arrange this in ascending order. We have 9 and then 9 again. And then we have another 9 and then 10, another 10. And then we have 14, and then 15, and then we have 16, and then 17, and then 18. So simply look for the number that appears the most. For 9, we have 1, 2, 3. For 10, we have 1, 2, 1, 14, 1, 15, 116, 117, 118. So the number that appears the most is 9. This will be our mode and since only one number appears the most this is unimodal now let us arrange this also in ascending order we have three and then we have four another four and then we have five another five 
and then we have 6, and then 7, and then we have 8, 9, and 10. We have 1, 3, 2, 4, 2, 5, 1, 6, 1, 7, 1, 8, 1, 9, 1, 10. So both 4 and 5 appears twice. So these are our modes, 4 and 5. Now, since there are two modes, then we call this bimodal. Now, let us arrange this. So, first we have 19, and then we have 20. Next, we have 21, and then we have 23. Another 23, we have 24, and then we have another 24. We have 27, 28, and another 28. So we have 119, 120, 121, 2 23s, 2 24s, 127, 2 28s. So 23, 24, and 28 all appears twice in this observation. So we have three modes, 23, 24, and 28. Since there are three modes, we call this trimodal. Last one, let us arrange this. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We only have one count for each number, meaning we have no mode. So for mode, we have none. So we have here no mode. For the summary, I have listed here the advantages and disadvantages of mean, median, and mode. Just take a look at it for your reference. Now, it is time to check your understanding. Pause this video for more time. Let us answer the number of kids who bought ice cream in cups in 15 randomly selected days in a month were as follows. 2, 1, 5, 0, 1, 4, 12, 0, 3, 5, 7, 2, 9, 5, and 2. Find the letter A, mean, B, median, and C, mode. Let us solve first for the mean. All we have to do is to add all these numbers here. These numbers are number of kids who bought ice cream in cups in 15 randomly selected days in a month. So this is a sample. So sample mean x bar is equal to summation of x over n. So let us add all these values and then divide it by the total number of observations which is 15. So divided by 15. Using a calculator, this will give us 3.87. So our mean is 3.87. Now let's have B done. First thing that we have to do is to arrange this in ascending or descending order. I'll arrange this in ascending order. So we have 0, another 0, and then I have here 1, another 1, and then here is 2, another 2, another 2. And then 3, I have here 4, this is 5, another 5, another 5, and then 7, and then 9, and then 12. So now it is arranged in ascending order. There are 15 numbers, and 15 is an odd number. 15 divided by 2 is 7.5. Round up, it's 8. So we're going to choose the 8 number. 1, 2, 3. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So this is our median. So x tilde is equal to 3. Last one, the mode. So we have already arranged this a while ago. Now let us determine we have two zeros, two ones, three twos, one three, one four, three fives, one seven, one nine, and one twelve. Two and 5 both appear thrice in the distribution. So they will be our mode 2 and 5. Since there are two modes, then this is bimodal. Gets? Our next lesson is measures of central tendency 
for group data.